Hello everyone, welcome to our talk at the Flink Forward Virtual Conference 2020. Today we are going to talk about how the Amazon MSK team uses Apache Flink to monitor the health of a huge Apache Kafka fleet. I am Tito Chatterjee, a software development engineer on the managed streaming for Kafka team, which we will talk about shortly. Ryan is a principal product manager for the Kinesis data analytics team. What is managed streaming for Kafka? It is a fully managed AWS service that offers Apache Kafka to customers. Customers can create their own Kafka clusters and perform operations on them like increasing their size, updating configurations, etc. The managed streaming for Kafka team operates these clusters. We monitor them, automatically detect issues with them and repair them. What kind of metrics do we monitor? The most useful ones are the metrics emitted by Kafka process itself over JMX. We also run Zookeeper for the cluster. So we also monitor JMX metrics emitted by Zookeeper. Host level metrics like uh, CPU, memory, disk usage are also very important. We run other agents on the host, so we need to check if they are healthy from time to time, and we emit these as metrics as well. What requirements do we have from the system? When a cluster becomes unhealthy and it cannot be remedied automatically, the operator should get alerted. We have learned time and again at Amazon that when there are large scale events, one of the biggest source for operator pain is a barrage of alerts for every individual resource. So we need to make sure that the system is able to aggregate multiple unhealthy clusters into a single alert. Anyone who wants to check how well we are doing at managing our fleet should be able to do so on a dashboard. The system should be able to notify automated remediation workflows that will heal the unhealthy cluster. When they do get alerted, operators should be able to look up currently unhealthy clusters. Both operators and internal software systems should be able to query for the health status of a specific cluster. Developers should be able to change the alarming criteria. They should be able to modify existing alarming criteria. Delete some criteria if they think they are no longer relevant. Or add new alarming criteria that they deem appropriate. So what are some challenges with this? One challenge is that we have a huge number of clusters in our fleet. Thus having individual alarms on clusters and modifying them each time will take too long. Also, when we have outages or have updates to alarming logic, we do not want to lose information about which clusters were unhealthy during the meantime. So considering all these challenges, here is the idea that we came up with. All of the metrics that are generated on a host that we discussed earlier, all of them will be published from the host into a common Kinesis stream. This Kinesis stream of all metrics from all of our fleet is consumed by a Flink job. The records from the stream will be keyed by cluster ID and node ID from which they originate. We will Filter out all the metrics other than uh, relevant ones that we have chosen to alarm on. And now for every such metric for a specific node, we will aggregate its value over a time window and determine if the metric is an alarm. We will record the health information for every cluster and node in a database. This is essentially the list of metrics on the node which we consider to be in alarm. Finally, we will sum up the number of clusters deemed unhealthy every minute and emit a metric for this number. 
this architecture describes the idea in a little more detail. The first thing we have is a Kinesis stream that has records from hosts all over the fleet. Every record consists of multiple metrics from the host clubbed together along with information about the cluster ID and node ID of the host on which they originated. Every host is publishing its metrics as records every minute. Now these records are consumed by the Flink job. The first thing we do inside the job is to key the records by their cluster ID and node ID. Next, we filter out everything in the record except for the value of the metric relevant to this specific alarm. For the sake of this example, let us consider we are only looking for offline partition count metrics and trying to alarm on it. We then aggregate all offline partition count metrics over a tumbling window of one minute. Windows are keyed by cluster ID and node ID. So all the metrics from a specific node get aggregated together. If the sum of all the metric values for the minute is found to be above zero, we consider the node to be in breach for that specific minute. This is Aggregation might change from some to some other function like maximum or minimum or average. The condition greater than zero can also change according to the type of the alarm. We are talking in context of this specific example. If the node's metric is in breach for the minute, we output a value of one. If not, we output zero. Now we aggregate these outputs over a sliding window of five minutes, sliding by one minute at a time. This period of five minutes can also change for a different alarm. We then check if the number of minutes that the alarm was in breach in the last five minutes is too high. For example, we consider the alarm to be in breach if it was breaching for, let's say, three out of the last five minutes. Note that we are emulating here how alarming systems like Prometheus or CloudWatch allow us to declare an alarm by simply saying, Sum of metrics X, Y, Z should not cross zero more than three times in any five minute period. We are doing something similar to that. If the condition for the previous check is fulfilled, the alarm is considered to be breaching for the specific cluster and node. We store the Boolean value of whether the alarm is in breach along with the cluster ID and node ID in a flink tuple and pass it down as an output. Here we have described the operators that determine the value of the offline partitions alarm. Now let us assume there are other alarms just like the offline partitions alarm we just described. They all look at different metrics and can have different criteria. We key all of the tuples output by these alarms by their cluster ID. We aggregate all the alarm information for different nodes of the cluster into one object. We then persist this cluster health information into a database. We consider a cluster to be unhealthy if it has some nodes in any kind of alarm. We aggregate the number of clusters which are unhealthy using a tumbling window and finally publish this as a metric. As we can see, this solves all the problems we had set out to solve originally. An operator can simply query the database where we persist all the cluster health information to get the unhealthy clusters for any given minute, even in the past. The same thing can be done by internal systems that need the health state of a cluster. We can make a dashboard using the total unhealthy clusters metric that we emit. We can set alerts on when the total unhealthy clusters crosses zero, which means that there are some clusters which became unhealthy. This also makes sure we get a single alarm even when say 150 clusters become unhealthy. The Flink job can trigger remediation workflows automatically when it detects that a certain cluster is unhealthy. Also, developers can easily change the alarming criteria through code. When deployed, all clusters will alarm on the newly deployed alarming logic now. I want to talk about the time characteristics of the Flink job for a bit. 
we use event time rather than processing time for all operations in the job. When the host publish records into the Kinesis stream, they record the current timestamp using their local clock. This is the timestamp that we use for event time. Using event time creates an accurate history of when a cluster exactly became unhealthy, even when there is some processing lag from the Kinesis stream or when we resume the job after some downtime. Running a Flink cluster has considerable operational overhead. We need to take care of detecting when nodes in the cluster become unhealthy and replace them with new hosts. We need to take care of scaling the cluster up or down according to the amount of work being done in the job. We wanted to avoid all of these overhead. So we decided to use Kinesis Data Analytics, which is an AWS service that provides customers the ability to run their Flink job in a serverless way. It takes care of self-healing and auto-scaling for us. There was one corner case that we needed to deal with separately. Hosts can sometimes become unresponsive or get cut off from the network, causing no metrics from the host to flow to the Kinesis stream. Flink, as we know, has lazy windows. If no metrics come from a certain node ID in a cluster, no window is created for it. No window means that the cluster is never considered to be in alarm. This is a problem that we absolutely needed to solve. We wanted to alarm when there are no metrics from a certain node ID in a cluster for a specific period of time. Let us talk about how we modified the architecture to detect nodes from which we are missing metrics. We add a new type of source called cluster node source that brings events when a node gets created, deleted or modified. Nodes can get created when a cluster is created or when it is scaled up. Nodes get deleted when a cluster is deleted. We key the events from cluster node by cluster ID and node ID and then connect the stream with the existing metric stream. The output is a single stream containing either a metric record or a cluster node event. Now we aggregate these metrics over a one minute window. The window aggregation function behaves like this. If it encounters a cluster node event, it stores it in its long term operator state. If it encounters a metric record instead, it will store the cluster ID and node ID it came from in a temporary list to compare against the current clusters. After it has gone through all the records in the window, the aggregation function will compare the temporary list to find which of the cluster nodes in the state did not receive metric records in this window. For such a cluster, we output a value of 1 or else we output a value of 0. Just like we did with other alarms, we have a sliding window of 5 minutes. We check if the cluster was in breach more than 2 out of the last 5 minutes. If so, we consider the node to be in breach of the missing metrics alarm. We then output this tuple just like all the other alarms to get aggregated at a cluster level. There are some caveats we have not yet discussed which are essential to solve for running the system in production. For example, there are cases when a customer fills up their disk space on their Kafka node. This causes the Kafka process to go down on the broker. In such cases, we can't really remedy the situation and have to wait for the customer to fix it. The solution we came up with is to automatically suppress an alarm on a cluster if another specific type of alarm is in breach for the same cluster. In this case, we suppress Kafka broker down alarm if disk full alarm is in breach for the same node. There are cases when a customer performs an action that damages their Kafka cluster irreparably and makes it unusable. For example, customer can delete their custom KMS encryption key that the brokers use to encrypt data at rest on their disks. In such cases, we do notify the customer about the situation, but we also need to be able to blacklist certain clusters by putting them into a do not alert list. If a cluster is in this list, we will not count it towards the total unhealthy clusters metric. We have not talked about automatic remediation, which needs to be built to take care of most unhealthy cluster scenarios.
that was my talk thank you all at this time i'd like to take any questions or feedback or suggestions that you have